All right, so this is part one of the Traxxas NitroHawk uh, electric conversion series or build series. Um, now, the first part of any electric conversion is to sort out how you're going to uh, mount the electric motor onto or around the gearbox that was uh, originally designed for a nitro chassis. So uh, I do work, I do a lot of projects with Brian Marquez, uh, BMZ Designs. Uh, he's on eBay, he's on rc10talk.com, you can find him on Facebook too. A uh, really good guy, he cuts a lot of custom parts for me, and this is one of the custom parts that he made for me for this particular uh, build. So he made a few of these motor plates, and uh, they're designed to fit with the uh, Nitro Hawk and Nitro, you know, Street Hawk or Nitro Buggy chassis uh, gearboxes. Okay, and uh, they have a little bit. They have a few features on them. So one of them is a little bit of a, a recess here on the back side of this plate, right here, so that it accommodates this bulge out in the gearbox. Okay, so if if you don't have that uh, little recess, then this motor plate will get pushed out a bit uh, when you try to mount it and that will make it even harder to have enough space to accommodate the uh, slipper hub the, or the entire slipper assembly here. Um, another feature which I'm actually still working with him on, so this is kind of a more of like a prototype motor plate, is to put some uh, countersinks in the holes that go into uh, for these screw mounts here. And the reason for those countersinks is just so that you have uh, enough space to put a, a lock nut of some sort uh, onto the motor plate and not have the uh, outer edge of those nuts uh, rub against the slipper hub because the slipper hub has to mount onto this input shaft here. And you need enough space for the entire slipper assembly to effectively mount onto this uh, um, hexagonal portion of the input shaft, okay? Uh, and so, with this setup as it is, without the countersinks in these holes, there is just enough space for the outer portion of the slipper hub. So you have these two hub pieces, one goes on the inside, and then you have you know your whole slipper assembly, and there's another one that goes on the outside. This outer one just barely mounts on the outer portion here of this uh, hex region, but there's a it, it's not perfectly encased. Like it, it kind of overlaps maybe, you know, the thickness of this hex part on the slipper hub overlaps maybe half of the outside portion of the of the hex here so I want to get it all the way in so really just having an extra you know one or two millimeters going into the motor plate here uh, would help a lot because um, <clears throat> that would just allow me to make sure the entire slipper assembly is locked onto the input shaft so uh, we're gonna work on getting an updated motor plate here uh, to have some countersunk holes uh, right now I just have uh, three by 22 millimeter screws going from the back side of the gearbox all the way through through these three holes and then there's enough room to to not quite do a, a lock nuts but just conventional three millimeter nuts that I can screw down and then maybe you know right now I just put a little bit of thread lock on the ed, uh, ends of those screws just to help hold those nuts down um, but I would eventually like to use lock nuts and you, with this current setup also, you need to be a little bit careful with how much you tighten these nuts down. This is another reason why you would want to have those countersunk holes. If those holes aren't countersunk as they are in this assembly and you really crank down on these nuts, they're gonna tighten the gearbox so much that you'll start to notice a little bit of binding in this gearbox. This gearbox actually spins very freely. It's actually a really nice gearbox. So uh, if you tighten these down too much, you're gonna feel a little bit of bind. So having, again, another one or two millimeters of room as, as a, if you can countersink these holes into the motor plate, that buys you a bit more space to sort of tighten these nuts down um, or even just put a lock nut in there, then you won't have that problem. Um, the other thing I did is to add a ball diff, which you can see right here, okay? Uh, apparently these kits, the Nitro Hawk, the Nitro Buggy, the Nitro Street Hawk, they came with gear diffs. Uh, planetary gear diffs uh, in the gearbox. So to get the ball diff, that's like a whole upgrade kit. And there are a few different versions of that upgrade. Uh, let me see if I can find... Yeah, so part number 4620 is one of the ball diff types. This particular assembly 
I think was originally meant for the Traxxas Bullet, uh, but it also fits in these Hawk gearboxes. Um, and then there's, jeez, uh, I forgot the part number, but there's another part number that's like the Pro Ball Diff um, that probably goes together a little bit better than this one. Um, but essentially, the, the main difference between this 4620 and the Pro Ball Diff is the, um, is the number of uh, spring washers you have uh, to, to adjust the tightness of the ball diff uh, because those spring washers run up against the thrust bearing. Uh, this has two spring washers, the Pro one has four. And the other difference is that the, in, uh, the inside of the diff where uh, both halves mate, normally in a ball diff, uh, that mating section would have uh, two ball bearings in there. This one just has a plastic bushing, okay? <clears throat> so this diff's a little cheaper, um, but it still works okay. So I figured I'd try it here. Um, yeah, so right now I'm just, you know, working through the motor mount component of this. That'll take a little bit of time because he has to cut, uh, you know, a whole new part for me and ship it out to me. Um, but once I get that, I can put this on and then put the whole slipper assembly together and basically this is ready to go, okay? It's, uh, it should be a pretty straightforward installation uh, once you have the motor plate because all you need are three, uh, three by 22 millimeter screws and eventually with uh, you know, the right design with the final ace design, uh, three lock nuts and you're ready to go. You can just put everything back together as normal. Um, with the, this is a little bit different than with the uh, Kyosho Rampage Pro and Outlaw Rampage Pro electric conversions that I did where the uh, input shaft is a different size uh, and it's, it's meant to accommodate uh, a nitro assembly for the spur gear which puts the spur gear like way far out and that would have, that made it difficult to mount the motor in a way so that the pinion would made it against the spur gear. I don't think we're going to have that problem here with this particular uh, chassis. So it should just be like a direct plug and play for the motor plate and then everything else just goes back together as normal. You shouldn't have to do any like silly modifications or anything. Uh, with perhaps one small exception, which is to make sure you have enough space between the uh, inside edge of the inner slipper hub and whatever you know nuts you have to close off the motor mount. <clears throat> so in unmolested form uh, there is you can see there's a little bronze bushing in here that's something I added. There's a bit of a gap between the bearing on the inside of the housing for uh, this outer portion of the input shaft and the actual outside of the housing and the way that this would have originally mounted was to go right up almost flush against the, the gearbox housing. But now because you're adding a few millimeters of material vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, the motor mount here, you need to add a little bit of uh, spacers uh, just to kind of push the slipper hub out a little bit. So uh, what I'm doing is I'm using uh, five by eight millimeter bushings that are two and a half millimeters uh, wide and I'm using, presently I'm using three of them and that pushes everything out just enough uh, so that I have pretty good clearance between the slipper hub and the uh, nuts here, okay? Um, I'd like to be able to use only two if possible because that would allow me a bit more clearance on the outside of this hex portion of the input shaft to finish mounting the entire slipper assembly like nice and clean. So we'll see again, we'll see how this whole thing goes together when I have these countersunk holes here, um, whether that makes it easier to mount the slipper assembly. So that's where I am right now. And thanks for watching.